my friends, we have come across something which is insane, to say the least. This deck can do damage beyond my own comprehension. <laughs> Uh, let's get into this. What is up, peeps? This is For The Win TCG, and I'd like to welcome you back to another YouTube video. And today we are showcasing Chandelure, a card which seems to be so good that no one noticed it. Does that make sense? Hell no. But let me explain. This card was released in Lost Thunder, and oh my god, Vortex of Pain. What an attack. This attack does 20 damage for each damage counter on all of your opponent's Pokemon. Ow, wait, what's its first attack? Curse Drop. Put four damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon in any way you like. Oh, wait, who's this? Tapu Koko. Hi, buddy. He can turn zero damage from one flying flip into 240 for this Chandelure. If your opponent has a board completely filled up with six Pokemon, a flying flip... That's 20 damage to each Pokemon on your opponent's side, turns 0 to 240. If that's not enough, Shrine of Punishment. Just pokes those GX Pokemon out there and just builds up damage on and on and on. Is that not enough? Spell Tag. Four damage counters whenever you are knocked out on your Pokemon in any way you like. There are so many spread options in this deck and so much power that this is definitely something to work with. So I'm going to get into a game here. I'm sorry for not having a face cam in this video. I did record one with a face cam before. However, the face cam completely corrupted and it was connected to the video so I couldn't uh, separate the gameplay. So I do have to re-record here. However, in that video, I was able to hit, I believe 360 damage. I'll show you a clip of it here. With the deck, I was, I think I, won I beat every single deck I played in that one, which was the likes of Gardevoir, um, <clears throat> And what else did I play against? I'm not too sure. My memory's going blank here. Um, you can probably tell I don't pay too much attention to uh, what's going on on my opponent's side of the field. <laughs> um, but yeah, this deck is just like, wow. It's just wow. Um, the card is, again, one of those cards like Heracross in the last video that I made. It just, just kind of, you know, snuck in with Lost Thunder as all these other cards were being released. It was just like, wow, okay. Um, so it looks like we might actually not be playing against the GX deck here, which is obviously going to be detrimental to us. Um, but let's just start setting up anyway. I kind of want to hold this hand um, just because we have the likes of a Rare Candy, right? And I'm just, I am going to do that. I'm going to take that risk and hold the hand because we want to get the Chandelure out pretty much right away. Um, so this works on the basis of Malamar. Um, this attack cost is quite... Iffy is the word I would use. Um, now, I know, of course, you can go for the likes of Counter Energy, um, which probably is more suited to this deck, but I do prefer the likes of Malamar um, and just playing Psychic Energy. <clears throat> it allows you to not have to worry about searching out your Counter Energies and your Double Colorless Energies if we, if we were to play that with Coco, obviously. Um, and instead, we actually play Coco while using Psychic Energies. Of course, you just need one Energy Attachment and one Malamar, and then you've got a Coco ready to go. So um, we don't really need to go down that road. Now, if this is reminiscent of anything, you're probably thinking Honchkrow. And Honchkrow definitely is extremely similar to this, uh, this card. However, the very, very, very noticeable and huge difference is, of course, that it does 20 damage for every damage counter rather than doing the likes of... Hey, this is pretty nice, actually. This is a really good start here, actually. Yeah, so it does 20 damage rather than... Um, brain brain t uh, 10 damage times each damage counter so it just it's such a huge difference and it is it is the difference between a flying flip um and and let's say two flying flips you know one flying flip goes to 240 on the chandelure whereas on a haunch crow one flying flip is only 120 and that's a huge difference it's an incredible difference um plus getting these chandeliers out as you can probably see here are not it's not too hard now the big problem with chandelure i'll, I'll point it out right away as you can probably tell power. is one oh yeah power off um is one uh weakness to dark so zorak is definitely a problem and of course, uh, 140 HP, it's quite weak for a stage two. And uh, there are loads of decks that can, that can just one shot a Chandelure. So with that said, you do have your fullbacks. But this card, there's like, there's always, in, in a game, there's always that, like, that one turn where you just go mad and just hit insane damage. <laughs> and it's like, it's usually overkill. Usually it's on a Pokemon that you don't even want to knock out. Like there's loads of times where I've knocked out like a, 
um a bloody 60 hp basic and hit 300 damage just because like that's just the way it is right um obviously i'm emphasizing but um sometimes you have to hit that damage just to one hit ko the pokemon in front of you just because you can't want take it out with you know a curse drop or something now this is a uh, really attractive here um being able to see right now that they are filling up their board state so what i might do is actually go for energy on the cocoa rather than the lampant down here and just um hopefully yeah that's what i was hoping for and fingers crossed we find a route to malamar which we do that's just great um let's bump their brooklet hill off there we will drop this lampant and a psychic energy get malamar into play and uh, we will just drop a energy onto the Tapu Koko. So if anything happens to this Chandelure, we have some more spreading. Um, and then the Chandelure that will be out next turn will probably be the one taking the prizes as we go. So uh, let's do another curse drop here. And we will just continue to spread damage um, and make sure damage is across the board. Pretty much like its own little flying flip, right? Obviously less significant. And we want to make sure that the main attacker has the most damage counters on it. Um, as much as well i wouldn't say as much as possible but usually three is the best one um because that means you're at least doing 60 damage on top and uh when you have like all this stuff in play then you know it's not too hard to deal with um now they are playing swampert quagsire a list that i did make a while ago i don't know if this is someone who saw me make the list or not i mean I i'm pretty sure i'm not the first one to come up with the idea of swampert quagsire pretty sure um but I'm, I'm in love with swampert quagsire i've won so many like online tournaments with that i've beaten so many tier one decks with swampert uh, quagsire it is a really fun deck the key to the deck is these max elixirs there sorry exp shares not max elixirs the key to the, to the deck is that so usually if you want to beat swampert quagsire just take down the exp shares with a field blower unfortunately we don't but our goal here is to just out do them it's just to be like okay you could do your damage but i'm just going to be like whoopang every single time regardless what you bring up regardless of its hp i'm just going to smack you um and ko you now the fact that they have makargo in the active is obviously going to be a problem problematic for them and you can tell from their smooth over they didn't go for any sort of switch so we know we're safe this turn which is very good news um and i'm actually kind of liking this so we've got a completely fresh lily here which is nice but i want to Oranguru first. Um, now, taking out this Makargo could be kind of a, a big deal. So I kind of want to do that now while I'm here. Um, let's just knock out this Makargo. And the reason why is because being able to not only power draw, but power draw into the card you want every single turn is just kind of crazy. Right, so we'll <coughs> go for Mysterious Treasure and bench a Litwick um, and throw that down there so we can just start setting up on the other Chandelure. Um, in the two, actually, no, we'll, we'll Malamar at the end. In the two games I played in the recording that got corrupted, <laughs> it was quite unfortunate, actually. Both those games, I prized two Chandelure, and we still managed to take wins. It was just insane. Um, so here comes Malamar showing you exactly why you should play it in this list um, and why it's good. Next turn, we can guarantee our Chandelure is doing some good damage. So 160 there, just nice and easy. Uh, as I said, you're usually going to be doing overkill attacks. <laughs> We're just hitting way too much damage for what you need. Um, but... The great thing is, is that not only are you doing damage for every damage counter on your opponent's side of the field, but that will also pretty much mean that the, the, the Pokemon you're attacking is likely to have some damage on it, which means you're probably more likely to knock it out. So it's just like a double double bonus there. Obviously, they got a ton of damage counters. You're doing more damage for every damage counter on them. It's just really cool. Now, this is where like it's, it's kind of just a matter of one shot, one shot, one shot, um, because they are just going to be streaming their Swamperts now um and see that they're already getting ready now for a <coughs> macargo and this is this is where this deck is really hard to just take out because um like it's just so when swampert quagsire sets up all you need is just once you get the quagsires and the exp shares and at least one swampert the, the deck just rolls itself whereas this deck here this chandelure deck is a bit of a it's a bit of a brick uh, it's, it's slightly like a big brain deck where you you know it doesn't really go itself the whole way you just have to play it right in order to do um what you're looking to do so what we're going to do is we're going to put uh three on here and then i think one here uh, we want to make sure that we pick our targets oh <laughs> the doy uh we have an extra one here so i guess we can drop it onto the uh yeah that's perfectly fine we'll drop it onto the slugma there so we know we're definitely getting a knockout on this um and they will respond next time with their own ko um i kind of really want to get a top of coco flying flip right now but again we're in the realm of overkill where we're just getting knockouts anyway so do we need to flying flip flying flips like 
if we need to. That's pretty much what Flying Flip is here for. It's like, it's either at the start of the game or if we are in a dire situation where we have to. So let's uh, discard the energy and get a Lampant. There we go. So we have all four of our Shadowlaws in here, which is fantastic. It just means we can just continue to stream our attacks here. Malamar is just out here going for the Psychic Recharge onto the Lampant. So next turn, all we need is an Energy and a Shadowlaw, and then we are good for another Shadowlaw to go in and do its thing. And if the damage is just too weak, then there's no need to worry. <laughs> we have good old Tapu Koko just coming in and doing its thing. Now, we could... Uh, bench and Inke, and I'm actually kind of all for that because they're probably recognizing that Malamar is like the the, the key to this list. Um, it's probably what makes it do, uh, makes it able to stream its attack so well. And it's true, Malamar is what makes this deck so uh, consistent. Once I said, oh, just 200 damage raw. It's just insane. <laughs> I just, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. Um, this uh, drew a little bit of hype on Twitter. <laughs> ADG is AD ADVGYM ADVGYM uh, on Twitter. Basically, I, I made a post um, of. By the way, follow me on Twitter for some some good old gaffs, Pokemon gaffs. Um, yeah, so I actually posted on Twitter my Shadow GX, and it had fifteen hundred damage on it, and that was obviously because of Shandador, right? <clears throat> I just absolutely annihilated it, and I did in one shot, one attack, fifteen hundred damage. Now that's weakness, obviously, so it's not as great as it sounds, but I was still able to hit raw, no weakness, no damage modification, 860 damage in one turn. If that is not overkill, I don't know what is. <laughs> right? It is just mad. You'll probably see at the end of a game, like, how much damage this deck does. It's just, it's beyond comprehension how much damage Sandalor can do. And I, I'm so stunned that this card just went under the rugs and no one even batted an eye. Um, for such a potentially powerful card if the, 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 the list is right and if it's piloted correctly. Obviously, if it's piloted correctly, that makes perfect sense. It needs to be piloted correctly in order to be good, right? And it's an, it's an example of like Zorak control, right? Zorak control is only good if you can pilot it well. That's what makes it great, um, right? If it, it, It's one of those decks with a very high skill ceiling. Whereas if you don't pilot it well, you're not going to win pretty much. But if you do, you're almost going to win every game, right? You just you have to understand your matchups and how to play them correctly. That's Zorak right control. Um, right, so they've actually had to go for a pass, which gives us a free turn, which makes me super excited um, because we can just go in again. Um, we'll go for a Malamar acceleration onto the benched Chandelot. And what we'll do here is we will accelerate to a Malamar just in case we get caught in the active. I'm perfectly fine with that. We could manually retreat and go for a Coco spread. Or we can just go for a curse drop, which I mean either or seems fine. The Coco spread is obviously the better, but I just don't want to get rid of the, the double energy there. That's kind of like <clears throat> not really ideal. Uh, how much damage are we doing? So I think we're KOing it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're KOing it. We're definitely KOing. It. I think we're hitting 140. So um I think a Cynthia is okay here. <coughs> All cards in our hand are dead right now, so Cynthia is pretty much good to go. Uh, and you, you're probably looking already at my um, uh, energy attachment, I guess. I, I'll drop it onto another Malamar in case we do get stuck in the active. That's fine. Um, you probably, yeah, you can probably realize if you look on the bottom right hand side, I only have 10 cards left in my deck. This deck chews itself up so quickly, it just mills itself, and I don't know why. Um, I don't know if it's just the 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 way I've constructed the list, where like cards are always burnable pretty much every turn um usually there's a term there's never a term where i don't play something from my hand well that, to be fair i don't think that ever, that's existed ever before where someone has that problem <laughs> um but nonetheless now this is where it gets a bit awkward you see because they're probably yeah they are taking out my coco now and uh our chandelure is not in the range of one hit ko which is rough and this is where shine of punishment would definitely help us but this is a non-gx deck so uh shine of punishment is just sitting out there doing absolutely nothing so unfortunately we need to just go we need to take matters into our own hands now i'm not too fussed about by that they need to take a ton of prizes we played the likes of rescue stretcher so i don't mind dropping a few chandelure um how many rare candies we've only played one rare candy so we have three left so we shouldn't have too much trouble bringing Chandelors back into play um, if we do find our rescue stretch. So I'm perfectly fine with this Coco going down and actually taking a turn to just attack into this Swamper. And even if we don't KO it, if they KO our Chandelure, our spell tag, we'll take it down. So their deck is just doing everything it should be doing. And we are still just slightly ahead. <laughs> just ever so slightly ahead to an extent where 
it's just working, right? And this is like amazing. Um, I'm just so, I don't know. I'm so stunned by this list. I, I, you could definitely be saying I'm overhyping it. <laughs> but if you can do incredible damage, if just even if it's just for one turn, I, I'm sorry. that You can't just say that, no. You can't just be like, eh, doesn't really matter. No, it does. <laughs> it's a big deal. It's a very big deal. Now, I could Guzma and take out the Macargo. Um, I could. I could. I could. Um, but we're kind of getting to the end of the wire here. And I kind of want to hit into this and then take it out with a spell tag, but then I can't follow up. So I think I am going to actually, I'm going to Guzma up the Macargo and go for a one Coco spread. Yeah, because we, we need to like increase our damage output um, because right now we're just not there and we need to make sure that we are. And I'm going to use Malamar one more time to bring on to the Oranguru again, just for retreat. If we do get caught, um, I have realized I don't actually play any um switch cards or anything like that in this list so sometimes you can get stuck so we're, we're going to prevent that here with malamar right so now we're definitely one shotting everything on my opponent's side of the field no issues there i was initially going to attack with chandelure you know bait it getting knocked out and then go for the spell tag um for the ko but i think this just makes it a bit better for us in the long in the long run considering they still have four prizes to take um i think yeah i think in the long run it's better off going down that road so um, we can next turn just retreat, take out that Macargo if we want. But odds are they're probably going to find a way to bring that Macargo away from the active. Yeah, so they've got the Guzma. And I'm assuming they're going to go take down a Chandelure. It seems like that would be... Wow, they're not taking the Chandelure. That is insane. So yes, the Malamite is the right choice. But in the early game, right now, our energy and our board state is just perfect. Plus, we have another Malamar in play. Taking out this Malamar is like... I don't know. It is a good idea, but it seems like I'm too far ahead to an extent where losing a Malamar doesn't really matter. And keeping the Coco may actually be better. So I don't really know about that. Considering that my Chandelors are still here and ready to go um, and just take you down, it's crazy to think that they went for the Malamar. But hey, that happens sometimes. And uh, next turn, we've got another Chandelor. Oh, this is just mad. This is just madness. I can't do this. <laughs> Just there we go. Rare candy in hand. We're good to go next turn. Vortex of pain. Tell me how much damage are we doing? 300 damage. Yes. Just so awesome. Ha. Oh my god. I bet you wish I had face cam now to see me do. <laughs> uh, this deck is just so fun and it's so like surprising. Um, I just didn't see this coming. Um, so let me know what you think. <laughs> Would you say this is something that, you know, should be considered i think if if you believe me in the sense where yesterday i said that um heracross right should be considered um as like so they're taking down the coco now i mean yes and no because we still have like curse drops so we still have ways of spreading um yeah so if i if i said the heracross was something to look out for this is something definitely to look out for the fact that you can go from like you can go 200 damage 300 damage the next turn and just whack and then you have shine of punishment shine of punishment has done nothing if you're playing gigs gx imagine just imagine oh it's just insane all right so we are just going to promote here a chandelure and we're just going to go for chandelure for now and i think we're just going to take out uh, let me just make sure i've got my maths correct here i want to make sure i'm doing things correctly and uh just intelligently um so that's 50 damage and that is 50 times two so that's 100 damage and that's 160 damage so we're definitely knocking this thing out that's a guaranteed um now that's actually okay because if they knock us out with the quagsire spell tag activates and then we can put some more damage on their end which means our next chandelure should definitely be doing it ah malamar yes malamar thank you just uh always remember that so I honestly think we're just in a position where we've got a game. Even when this Swampert Quagsire set up to the best I've ever seen a Swampert Qu Quagsire set up. It's got the Macargo out. It's got the Quagsires. It's got the EXP shares. It's got the, the Swamperts. They're all charged up. His energy in play is insane. And we're just like, don't care. 300 damage. <laughs> don't care. <laughs> oh, this is just, oh, it's mad. It's absolutely mad. Now, granted, this deck is slow, so I, I, w I will say that it is a stage two. Like, that, that's something super important, right? Um, it is a stage two deck, um, so it's not going to be quick, and this format is fast. So if I played the likes of tier one decks, this deck may struggle. I will guarantee you that. Um, Rayquaza could definitely just get this done in the early game. Lost March, for example, would just be like, don't care. <laughs> I'm just going to throw a bunch of Pokemon in Lost Zone and just one-shot, 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 one-shot. Um, so 
that is why I actually didn't include Deoxys because Deoxys is like, if we are struggling to get going, it's just as simple as that. Um, right, so I think, do they think that we haven't got the game? Because we have game, right? That's 60, yeah, we have game. <laughs> Uh, right, so uh, I'll leave the video there. That's 20 minutes in. Let me show you the list. There are a few variants that I've made. As you can see, there's another one there called Insane Damage Zero, um, which is what it does whenever you duplicate. That one plays Marshadow uh, rather than Tapu Koko, but I think Tapu Koko is just so important. Being able to do go from zero to 240 damage in one turn if they have a full board state is just something you can't ignore. So let me show you the full list anyway. Uh, this is the list. Let me know your thoughts down below. I think it runs superbly. I think it does everything it's sought out to do. It's really consistent. We have four Mysterious Treasure, four Ultra Ball. It's just consistency. It's really, really strong, um, and I'm really, really happy with it. You've seen what it can do. So... With all that said, let me know your thoughts on this card. Is it something that I am just thinking way too heavily about and I'm getting way too excited, which definitely I would agree partially is the case? Um, or would you say that this is something that people really need to take seriously? I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Other than that, do even like if you did enjoy. Subscribe for more, hit the bell notification so you can see all crazy kinds of decks uh, every day during the week. Um, anyway. I'm super excited. I'm super pumped to upload this um, and I'll leave you to it. Peace.